No two dairy farms are exactly the same, but the methods used to produce milk on farms in the United States and Western Europe are roughly comparable. They're basically doing the same things. All dairy cows are eventually slaughtered for meat, although they're bred almost exclusively for milk production. That means the dairy farmer gets most of her profits from the milk she produces, not the beef that she sells. And most all dairy cows are going to be fed a very high energy diet which contains lots of grain in addition to forage. For those of you who don't know, forage just means grass and hay. They're going to be milked twice a day, sometimes three times a day, in a milking parlor that often uses, well, almost always uses automatic milking machines. And there's some new technologies that almost com take humans completely out of the milking process. For those of you who are very unfamiliar with dairy production and what a dairy farm looks like, I'm going to take you on a virtual tour of the dairy farm in Oklahoma State University. Now this is a university farm and so research is performed there. But the, des the farm is designed to mimic what real farms, for-profit farms, look like. So the, the way dairy production takes place on this farm gives you a very good illustration of, what dairy, of how dairy is produced on other farms. I want to start at the actual birth of a calf. Now, if you're a bit squeamish and never seen anything like this, you may want to look away at times. But this is a little baby girl, a little heifer, being born. The mother had been in hard labor for only about 10 minutes, mild labor for about an hour. And she's about to push her baby out. The baby isn't. Oh, there it goes. Now, now it's moving. And the farmers are going to leave the cow alone if they can. Let the mother do her own thing. They'll only come in if it's clear that the, the baby's not coming, there's a, a danger to her, or they need to intercede to ensure the calf's safety. And there we go. That's the calf giving birth. And just a few minutes pass between that excerpt and this one, the mother... It's going to soon get up and do her job. Now, right after the calf's being born, as long as it looks healthy, farmers are not going to do anything right away. They're going to let the mama cow do her work because she's going to immediately get up and start cleaning the calf with a tongue. And she's going to keep at it until the calf is actually very clean. I'm sure the presence of its mother um, has a number of benefits for the calf as well. But, you know, there's a, a lot of placenta, other stuff covering the calf, and the mother is going to lick it all up. And at one point in here, it's going to be a really gross part, but she is going to eat, start eating her placenta. So there may be a point where you want to look away. The calves, they'll take between 20 minutes and an hour to start walking. This one took about an hour before it would actually start walking. I think the gross part may be coming up. Yeah, there it goes. Don't worry, it won't last long. In the next stage, I want to show you, this calf had been trying to walk for a good while. It would try some, fall, rest, try some, get up again. I'm just going to show you one little part of it trying to get up and walk, but because it's cute, interesting to see. And you can see the calf is almost completely dry now. And at this point, the farmers are going to come in pretty soon and take the calf. Now, this, this is done for a number of reasons. See, this, uh, about an hour had passed between the frame where it was trying to walk, and now you can see the calf is very dry. And the farmer is going to take it. And this is for a number of reasons. They're not... They don't really have much incentive to want the calf to nurse from its actual mother. And the reason is that the farmer doesn't know whether that mother has good colostrum in her milk. Colostrum is the is parts in the cow's milk during their first day, maybe first two or three days, has lots of antibodies that's going to give a big boost to the little calf's immune system. But they don't know if that mother cow has good colostrum or not. And so they're going to take the calf. You see the mother isn't very concerned. They're going to take the calf and the calf will, for the rest of its life, be separate from its mother unless it happens to enter the milking herd and its mother is still there. And what the farmhand is doing now, he just put the calf, this is where it's going to live for a number of weeks. He's got 
dry bedding in there. You see the calf is now starting to walk. And the worker, he went and he's going to get colostrum that had been frozen. They took colostrum from a another mother cow long ago tested the colostrum found that it was very high in antibodies and so they froze it so that when this calf was born they could pull the colostrum out defrost it and know that they're giving that calf the best colostrum the best first tasting of milk it could possibly get now it may be hard to see what this calf is doing it's trying to nurse from the sides of its little hut. It doesn't it knows it needs milk very bad. It doesn't know exactly where it comes from, so it's just trying to nurse. And it does it for a while. And now it's ready. These are just some other calves that's been there. You can see some bigger, some smaller. Most of these are Holsteins, the black and white cows. There's gonna be a you might have caught a glance of a yeah, there's the little jersey over there on the end. And very soon the farm hand is going to come back with a warm bottle of milk that has lots of colostrum in it. And here comes the cow's first taste of milk. The worker is going to go in there gently. He's going to have to pick it up, help it out a little. And you see that bottle in the lower, lower left hand corner. That's the colostrum milk I was talking about from another cow. I don't know how long it was taken for another cow, but they know it's got lots of good antibodies in it. So they know that this calf's going to get a very good start in life. This calf's been a born, um, it's been alive like two hours now. And so it's, it's standing okay. And they usually have very little trouble getting it to drink milk at first. And they're going to feed it with a, like, with a bottle like this for about a week, after which they'll switch it over to giving it a bucket full of milk to drink. And this is the first day this little calf has been born. What we're going to do now is look at what will happen to this calf over the next few weeks while it stays in the huts up until it's time for it to be weaned. When the calves are first born, they're going to be fed only formula milk twice a day, 3 a.m. and 3 p.m. And for the first three weeks, all they're going to receive is the formula milk, much like the formula milk that we feed to human babies for mothers who aren't breastfeeding. And after about three weeks, the farmer will start adding grain and hay to the calves' diet to begin the process of weaning them off of formula milk and onto grain and forage. But they're still going to receive the formula milk twice a day until they're eight weeks of age, at which point they're going to receive formula milk only once a day. And then when they're nine weeks old, they're going to be weaned completely. And shortly after weaning, the farmer can now put the calf in a group with other calves. Once the calves are weaned at about nine weeks of age, they'll first be placed into a little pen with cows of a similar size and age, and they'll be fed hay and grain. Some antibiotics may be in the grain to help them deal with the stress of being weaned, and once the calves appear healthy, then they'll be placed in a bigger lot with more heifers where they have lots of room to to walk around and eat, always a shelter, always a dry resting place for them. And they'll stay in a pasture like this until it's time for them to be bred at about 15 months of age. But let's return to the calves and talk about why they're placed in individual pens instead of as a group together. One reason is so that the calves aren't as close to each other and cannot spread sickness and another reason is keeping them in those individual pens allows the farmer to, to monitor exactly how much the, each cow is drinking, how much they're eating. Therefore, they can tell whether the calf is sick or not. And also, since the calves don't really understand where the milk comes from, if we put these calves in one group, they'll all try to nurse from each other. And some of these calves are bigger than others. This little Jersey calves a bit smaller than the others. And as they reach under this calf and try to find it better to nurse milk, they won't find anything, they'll get aggravated and they'll start throwing their head up and it might knock this little boy down. And so we keep them separate from one another to protect them. You'll notice that in all of these huts there's always fresh dry straw. 
some of the, there's always water, and some of the older calves will have grain in addition to the formula milk. From a little after weaning until 15 months of age, the heifer will be kept out in a pasture like this with plenty of hay, some grain to eat, lots of room, shelter, but then it's time for the heifer to go to work. The heifer needs to be bred, the heifer needs to calve, because only once she calves will she be able to produce milk for human consumption. But you won't find a bull on this dairy farm. It's hard to find a bull on any dairy farm. Most dairy farmers artificially inseminate their cattle. You see in this little picture on the floor there's a gray storage tank. That storage tank contains liquid nitrogen. And with the liquid nitrogen is frozen bull sperm. Bull sperm from the bulls that has been shown to produce the best cows. And when I say best, I mean the cows that produce the most milk. And the farmer may have paid a lot of money to get the semen from the best bulls. I'm going to now show you the video from an episode of SUNUP, uh, a series produced by the Division of Agriculture here at Oklahoma State University. Then in the orange shirt there is Dr. Stein, an animal scientist here at Oklahoma State University. And uh, in his, between his arm and chest is a long, looks like a stainless steel rod. That is a rod that contains the thawed bull semen. And what he's doing now, first he's going to, that is the rectum he's going in. So he put on a long glove and he's going into the cow's rectum and he, first thing he's going to do is he pulled out whatever manure was there and here's giving a demonstration of where he's trying to get the rod into the cervix of the cow. And When the rod is in the cervix of the cow then he'll press the rod, uh, a nodule on it, and it'll eject the sperm out. Now what he did when he placed his hand in the rectum of the cow, he's going through the rectum and collecting and finding the cervix of the cow. Now of course the cervix is not in the rectum, but you can feel between the skin of the rectum and the cervix. You can feel it, and you can actually grab the cervix. And then he stuck the rod into the cow's vagina. And he's maneuvering the cervix with his left hand, maneuvering the rod with his right hand, such that he'll eventually get the rod into the cervix. And when he does that, you'll see him push. There it goes. Now he's ejecting the sperm into the cervix. And this is how you can take one bull, the best bull for producing the best cows, and have him impregnate thousands and thousands of cattle all across the world. The period between conception and birthing is referred to as gestation, and the gestation length for a cow is about nine months. So if she's bred and conceived at 15 months of age, she'll be around two years old when she first gives birth. During this gestation stage, dairy farmers will keep their cows in open barns or open lots or pasture. This farm here uses pasture, but wherever they are, they'll have ample space, lots of good nutritious feed, and certainly good shelter. This is, and then at two years of age she'll give birth and this is the birthing we saw at the beginning of this period and soon after she gives birth the farmer is going to come and take the calf away from her for reasons we discussed earlier the first couple days her milk will be used reserved to test the colostrum in it to see if it can be used to feed other cows but then once the colostrum is out of her system it'll be time for her to go to work and start milking a few days after she gives birth, she'll be she'll take her first walk down to the milking parlor. And she will have been acclimated to this herd before. She won't just be thrown in suddenly into a whole new group of cows. But when she goes to the milking parlor for the first time, she'll probably just follow all the others. And I've worked on two dairy farms and getting cows into barn is a really easy job. Many of the cows want to go there because milking relieves the pressure that's on their udder when it gets really full of milk and they're gentle nice cows, very easy to work with. And here they're getting very close to putting them into the barn and they're going to close the gate and now it's time to start milking. And first I want to show you what the milking parlor looks like from the cow's point of view. When it's their time to be milked then this is what they'll see. That's the thing they have to enter. Now most are just going to follow another cow in there. They get really used to this. And here 
or the cows actually going into the parlor like you just saw. And some of them want to go in there to do their voluntarily. Some you just have to pat their rear a little, but it's not a big deal to them. Certainly the first time in there, they're a little scared, but they'll usually just follow another cow. And here, this is from the viewpoint of the milkers. So this is what the cows will look like coming into barn if you were a milker. And it's a very gentle, calm thing. And they're going to line up right. And pretty soon we're going to start the milking process. The first thing the milkers will do is to wash off each of the cow's teats. Then they're going to dip the teats in iodine to sanitize it. Then they're going to squirt a little milk out to check it for a mastitis infection that we'll talk about in just a minute. And then they easily put on the automatic milkers. And once the milker is on the udder, you can just stand back and a vacuum system is going to vacuum all of the milk out. And there also, there's also computers there that are measuring exactly how much milk is being produced by each cow. And while the milkers on the cow, the workers can bring in another group of cows, let out another group, clean up something. It gives time for workers to do something that's in the parlor, but they're going to stay in the parlor. This is my favorite part. You don't even have to take these things off. And the minute you're going to see it, it just comes right off all by itself. And once the milkers have come off the cows on one side of the building, they'll let the cows out just like this. They go to the end of the barn, turn around, and there's a little alley for them to walk out. They're often very slow like this, but they're walking out, then they will return to the home where there's a dinner waiting for them. While the cow is producing milk, she'll be kept in a lot close to the milking parlor, like the ones here. These cows are underneath the shelter. All the cows will always have shelter. And this is the alleyway that they go to be milked, but also this is close to where their food is delivered. And you can tell they're very comfortable around people. People treated them with nothing but kindness. And these are the comfortable at resting areas they have. They use sand for a resting area. They clean it frequently. And there's also those, ind those they have little individual stalls there. That's to make sure cows don't step on each other's udders. And this is a picture of how they get feed. They have a truck that comes by and puts the mixture of hay and grains right there for them to eat. This is an example of kind of the outdoor lots that they have. They have plenty of room to move around. And during a growing season, sometimes they'll have access to pasture. Remember that the cow is about two years old when she has her first calf and starts being milked. And about two months after that, she'll be bred again for the second time. Then when the cow is about two years and nine months old, she'll be removed from the milking herd and sent to a dry lot. The term dry lot is meant to convey that the cow is not giving milk. She is dry. And this is a period when she can just rest, get her body ready for another calf, another milking. And so when farmers say to send them to the dry lot, they, that may actually be a, a verdant pasture. The dry just means she's not being milked at the time. And after two months in that dry lot, she'll be ready to give birth again and then go back to the milking herd. And once the cow was given birth about three times and has been through the milking cycle three times, she'll be culled from the herd and slaughtered for beef. It varies across cattle, though, depending on how much milk the cow is producing and whether she conceives quickly. Cattle with low milk production numbers and those that spirits difficult to conceive in will be removed from the herd earlier than others to make room for more productive cows. In this virtual tour of the dairy farm, we've been concentrating on what happened to a young heifer as it's born and as it enters the milking herd throughout its life. But we haven't said anything about the males. The males born on this farm, they're going to be sold often when they're just a few days old because this is a farm that concentrates on dairy production. They want to specialize in milk production. There are other farmers who specialize in raising dairy cattle for meat. About an hour west of this farm is a feedlot whose manager specializes in raising male Holstein dairy cattle for beef. According to my sources, about 70% of the male dairy calves born on dairy farms will be raised for beef and the other 30% raised for a veal. Some farms even now use sex semen where the ratio of female to male calves is higher than one to one. That way a dairy farmer can have mostly heifers and can choose the best ones to enter their milk herds and don't have to worry about what to do with a male calf when it's born. 